So let's answer the question, what happens to a dielectric in a uniform? We'll make this simpler by making it a uniform E in also, we'll make it simpler by just doing one dimension. All right. So one dimension means everything is going to be planar. So the field itself will be generated by two planes of charge. So one, let's see, we'll make it nice. It'll have a charge density sigma, and I'll draw it kind of with a hash mark like that to imply that it goes on forever. All right, so there is your plus charge. And we know that if facing that, well, that itself would make a uniform field. Well, let's go ahead and have one over here that is the minus charge, minus sigma. And it also is infinitely large. So the only dimension we really care about is that way. And everything's infinite in the other dimensions. OK, so we have created. Um, our uniform field, and we'll call it, for now, we need to specify which field we're talking about, E external. Every book uses its own little uh, symbols or, or subscripts for everything. I'm going to call this the external field, the one created before we put in, before we put anything in here, is just sigma over epsilon naught. I'll go ahead and put an I hat. It's going to be that way, from the positive to the negative direction. So this is the field before this dielectric. Okay. So we sort of did this a little bit when we did capacitors. So this time we're going to do similar to what we did for capacitors, but we're going to go, go further. All right. So now let's put in the dielectric here. And also it goes on forever. So I'll draw those. And it comes down like this. And like that. All right. And now this thing is inside a field E external, or the original field was E external. So if it experiences a field, we know what will happen inside. We probably talked about this in our capacitor lecture, is the little molecules and atoms that make it up become a little bit warped. All right. So the electrons get kind of pushed. Oops to the left, or they get pulled to the left, to the, the nucleus, the positive nucleus goes a little bit to the right, and you generate little dipole moments, P, inside each molecule. And there's a lot of molecules and atoms in there, so a lot of dipole moments. So the dielectric atoms or molecules, however you want to think about it, whatever it's made of, become polarized. All right, that's OK. And it creates a new field. So it creates an electric polarization field. Field big P. Okay. So each little atom or molecule gets a little p. All these little p's add up. And you call it big P, where big P is the uh, dipole moment per unit volume. It's just the sum of all the charge sum separation, add it all up, the total quantity of it per unit volume. And of course, big P points in the same direction as all the little p's. Okay. Uh, the unit, we can think about the unit for a second, a dipole moment is a coulomb meter, and per unit volume is a meter cube, so it's in coulombs per meter squared. Okay. So we're creating a polarization field throughout the material. So in this case, it's uniform and always pointing to the right because the dipole density is going to be uniform. There's nothing to cause it to change um, in different positions as we go. So we just have a uniform P in this case. 